Well, hello everyone. I am your host, TJ Jones of Signpost. Uh, we're here today with Mike Haig of Funbox, and we're going to talk to you about how new and growing contractors can make the right type of investments that are going to ensure sustainable growth. Um, so I want to thank Mike for chatting with us today. And before we dive into our topic, a uh, couple of questions here for you. First, obviously, I'd like to hear a little bit about your background and your role at Funbox. But first, we do have an ongoing tradition here at Signpost about pizza preferences. So uh, I'll turn this over to you now. What is the one thing that you would never put on a pizza? <laughs> well, okay, so TJ, I've got a, 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 a weird answer, so bear with me. When uh, I'm ready kid, for it. <laughs> maybe I was probably six or seven. I was at a pizza restaurant with my family, and this is weird. Bear with me. Okay, and I'm here. <laughs> there was another kid across the pizza restaurant. Didn't know this kid. It was the first time that I had <laughs> I ever saw somebody like choke in public, like that he needed the Heimlich maneuver. So crazy. He turns out, okay, everything's fine. But little Mike is like, you know, shocked. Imagine just <laughs> I'm that, sure. Shocked. So this is a pizza restaurant. And I found out that he had ordered this is weird. He had ordered the pizza that has melted or like kind of slightly melted gummy bears on them. Oh, like kid friendly pizza. And so ever, and ever since that day, I have connected gummy bear pizza with like, which is weird, with this weird, awful experience early in my life. So I will never eat gummy bear pizza. Gummy bear pizza. pizza. You know, yes. unfortunately, I've never even heard of gummy bear pizza, which is well, fortunate good. because clearly yes. it's hazardous. <laughs> yes, it's a dangerous, and I don't even oh, know. No. I don't think it was related. It was just a poor, unfortunate coincidence. But for me, like gummy bears equal, or gummy bear pizza equals like dangerous, treacherous, yeah. I think I would just, I would just, I think shy away from gummy bears as a whole. In fact, totally, I feel like yeah. after hearing that story, now I probably won't. Next time I yeah. see gummy bears, I'm going to have some kind of weird reaction to it. So <laughs> awesome. We're, uh, yeah. we're, we're, we're one minute in and gummy bears have been ruined for me. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Dangerous. Gummy, de definitely yeah. gummy bears. Oh there, boy. There's okay. A, there's my answer. Boy, adding, I'm always adding things to the list of things I should be afraid of. I just wasn't <laughs> expecting gummy bears to be one of them for today. So good to right. know. Thanks for that, right. Mike. Yeah. Uh, well, let's let's talk about your background. Other than uh, being a professional avoider of gummy bear pizza, <laughs> uh, tell me about your role at role at Funbox and kind of what what got you there. Yeah. So I I'll kind of talk about currently. I at Funbox work with and our, our kind of business development team, or really kind of our partnerships team, looking to to grow our business and just kind of find more kind of cohesive adjacent partners in the spaces that can help us grow our business and and kind of most importantly where can we do that where we're helping small businesses so we'll talk about that a lot today but that's just kind of where we we live in and breathe as a small business community um, so working with partners that are, are both existing and maybe potential or or um, opportunity for partnerships with folks like yourself and others mm -hmm. To say, hey, we've got these, you know, interesting mutual customers that need help with, you know, what we offer, small business financing, and, and how can we do that? So I, I come from a background of very software-driven, worked in the uh, software space, um, selling specifically to car dealerships for, for over ten years. So working mm -hmm. on automotive software, a lot of a lot of those were small businesses, some of them were big businesses, but kind of always keen on small business or op business operations and kind of the the nuts and bolts of helping businesses sustain and grow. Sure. Yeah. And it's one interesting thing I think is that anybody who works in, in the small business sector or working with um, small business owners, you know, is, is you recognize particularly with, with contractors or home service businesses, how difficult it can be, um, yeah. how many factors go into um, so many things from, from growing your business, starting your business, and then needing to man maintain all aspects, getting good at, at what it is that you're an expert at, whether that's plumbing or roofing or, or whatever the case may be, but also needing to sort of become an expert on things like, you know, business financial matters, um, you know, growing your business, sustaining that business. And I know a lot of that is what we're going to talk about today. So I think yeah. uh, now is probably a great time to, to jump into the, the, the discussion and chat a little bit about growth, um, sort of growth strategies for, for small and expanding businesses. Um, you know, contracting businesses in particular, but really what's going to be critical to the business. And um, we know, I, I know both of us from our experience um, working with small business owners that there are a lot of choices 
that contractors need to make. So I think the first question that's going to be interesting for people is if you have a limited budget to work with when you're sort of first starting out, uh, what considerations do you think business owners should make in, in deciding how to allocate that budget and, and what choices to make? Yeah, I, I always like to say, especially if budgets are, are tight and they almost always are, you know, for small business <laughs> right. to provide, Absolutely. Um, you know, think about what, you know, the, the fancy official term is ROI, but I would say going to have the most bang for your buck. And, mm -hmm. and maybe that is spending money. Maybe that's looking first at what you're doing to where you can get better before maybe you even spend a dime. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, are, are you asking for referrals? So I've had mm -hmm. two home service related uh, visits recently, past few months. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, they both did great, like totally nailed what I needed in my mm -hmm. apartment. And they left on good terms, but without ever kind of asking, hey, just in case you're in the neighborhood or have friends in the neighborhood, we'd love for you to refer us. Like I'm, I live in a small neighborhood. I could love for you to refer us to other, other of your, your friends or family or whoever you know. Mm -hmm. That's that's almost always step one. Um, sure. Because they did great. Like I would absolutely yeah. refer them. <laughs> of course, yeah. And if, if you're not having that conversation, then how's, you know, how's that going to yeah. happen? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'd say the other, uh, especially if budgets are tight, is um, I come from a background where I worked in, in, especially in kind of phone technology, telephone technology. And mm -hmm. one thing that we always just said was answer your phone. Like, yeah, there's a good chance that people are, are calling you right now and you're busy. You've got a million things going on. But likely, these are the best chances that you're going to get to do more to grow your business. And it's it's what we always call low-hanging fruit, right? It was just people are trying to get a hold of you right now to talk about your services, set appointments, mm -hmm. ask for pricing, things like that. And it's all mm -hmm. the phone. Um, and we're busy. We've got a million things going on. We're hopping between jobs. We're managing teams. I'm not saying it's necessarily easy, but it's something to think about as yeah. you then invest in marketing and, and work with folks like Signpost to drive more leads. We kind of make sure you're mm -hmm. taking care of those when they do come to you over the phone in the first place. So right. I, about your I, phone process and presence. Yeah, I know that uh, a, a large chunk of, uh, of business can come from missed phone calls. You know, I think particularly consumers in, in today's day and age, if, if we're calling someone and it's going to voicemail or you're not getting a hold of somebody right away, you're going to probably move on to the next business. The, the home services and contracting industry is, it's, it unfortunately can be kind of a crowded space. And um, there, yeah. there are a lot of things that need to be done to invest in, in that sustainable growth and nurturing your clients so that you are, uh, are taking advantage of, of past business you've worked with, continuing to maintain a relationship with people you've worked with in the past and asking for referrals, like you mentioned. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a lot of, like you said, low-hanging fruit, you know, um, the, yeah. the low-hanging fruit of, of making sure that you're nurturing existing customers so you don't fall into that cycle of always needing to rely on brand new business, potentially needing to always pay for leads rather than growing organically and, and nurturing yeah. those relationships. So I, I totally yeah, hear that. I'm calling... I'm the average consumer. I um, and I just get a voicemail and I don't hear back for uh, at all, or, or it's four days. When I've got a leak in my washing machine, which is currently the case, uh, slim chance that I'm going to wait around four days when I've got so many resources to learn about good options yeah. and and other options, and you know, just kind of reviews and things like that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah when it comes to the phone or, or kind of any of your inbound leads, the ones that are right in front of you are a good place to start in terms mm -hmm. of maximizing and, and going after low-hanging fruit. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and with, uh, with services like that, making sure that you're able to capture um, people who are, are giving you a call or people who are looking for your type of businesses or your, your type of business online. Um, it, it can get expensive to sort of maintain and, and manage all those things. Many home services businesses and contractors um, are, are smaller operations. You know, you may not always have someone who can answer the phone at any given time, or you may not always have the bandwidth to answer a bunch of phone calls after you've had a long day of completing jobs. Um, with those things comes with both short and long-term investments. So 
Um, what I find is that contractors can often get stuck in this short-term uh, profitability roller coaster, and they can either find themselves in situations where they have a lot of jobs coming in and they've got a lot of available cash, um, or they can find themselves in sort of a, a more dry spot where they haven't had a whole lot of leads coming through, or, or they haven't had a whole lot of jobs that have come in organically, and maybe they're struggling to make make payroll and get to that next uh, uh, next phase where they're sort of feast rather than famine. Um, yeah. I want to see if, if you have any insight into sort of what business owners can do to shift the peaks and valleys of when they, um, you know, have high income versus low income and how can they kind of turn that into a long-term gradual growth centered strategy? Yeah, I think, I think one is um, just prepare, just to think, just be aware of it and think about it and recognize when you're in those different peaks and valleys. Um, and, and, and business owners know this, that's not super, you know, it's not shocking to them. We hear all the time because we help businesses with cash flow problems and they're very aware of kind of, hey, because of seasonality, this is, I know I'm heading into a slow month or a slow mm -hmm. winter or fall. And, and I know that come around March because I do pool cleaning, I know that mm -hmm. things are going to pick up. So I think one is, yeah, be, be aware, which most of our business owners are. are. And then also, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what I know you guys do well, and we've talked about the past before is just kind of take advantage of that time when maybe things are, are slow. So mm -hmm. don't look at that as kind of dead time where, okay, just, you know, kind of turn the business off. How can we continue to nurture our leads, stay in contact with them, mm -hmm. um, ask for those referrals, communicate with them, despite mm -hmm. the fact that it might be our slowest time of the year, mm -hmm. because you're really planting seed then. It's it's more of kind of like farming as you prepare for mm -hmm. harvest. And right. if you can get your harvest even bigger because of the effort and the work that you do when things are maybe feeling mm -hmm. slower. Um, that's one thing that we talk about a lot, you know, kind of yeah. like small businesses. Sure. Yeah. And, and I think uh, with, with making sure you're spending that money the, the right way, you know, rather than obviously lead generation, I think is something that's, that's very important, but there's other things that, that you should be able to invest your money in when you have the money available, things like, um, you know, training employees or, or investing in a new system that's going to help you to, um, you know, to make these, uh, these leads more likely to work with your business, you know, investing in your website, I think is something that's very important as we're in more of a digital age now, making sure that consumers can um, go online, both find your business, look at your business's webpage or whatever system you have set up and figure out what job you can complete and so that they can be sure that they're making the right choice and uh, in working with your business. So making sure that um, as a business owner, you know, you're investing in things like working on, on your website, uh, maybe investing in a system that's going to help you manage your jobs. I know that here at Signpost, we're working with companies like Contractor Coach Pro and Job Nimbus and Breakthrough Academy. Those companies work hand in hand with, with individuals that have contracting businesses to define sort of what their goals are and how they can get to their goals. Um, I think a system like that that helps you manage your jobs and nurture your leads is going to be a, a system that uh, all contractors should really consider using as they grow their business or getting a system in place, you know? Yeah. And, and I think what we, what I've heard often working with small X and big businesses too, is that it, it feels daunting. It, it feels, sure. and you, you alluded to this earlier as well. Mm -hmm. Many of our customers, um, they, you know, they tell us, Hey, I'm really, really good at climbing on a roof or managing a team that climbs on a roof. Right. But thinking about, you know, I don't know, legion in the middle of my slowest season of the, of the year is it's just mm -hmm. not always my specialty. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I think just recognizing that and being okay with that and then stretching yourself and, and taking the leap to potentially talk to the partners that you just mentioned or mm -hmm. other technology companies and, and learn and potentially and invest when the time is mm -hmm. right. So I've heard a lot that, Hey, i I know those things are out there, but I just don't have the time or the energy mm -hmm. or the effort to go invest in them. When you're kind of stuck in a catch 22, then right. you're just kind of just, you're, you're almost kind of treading water because exactly. it feels so daunting. You don't want to take the leap. Um, when, when we say our business all the time, Hey, get peace of mind by knowing that you can be the world's greatest roofer, but there are other companies and partners out there that can help you with ABC mm -hmm. and can often do that. In, in a way that's extremely helpful for your business and fix that budget. And they'll work with you on the budget, depending on the time of the year, and what needs you have, yeah. uh, you know, kind of folks like you or who others 
you're just so invested in small business success <laughs> that that it's it's more about hey, how can we tailor this to you? How can we help mm-hmm. you be successful versus just you know, hey, let's let's layer it all on. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've I've talked to to clients of ours before that um, have been in a situation where you know they're they're struggling to figure out what sort of things to do, particularly in the online sector to grow their business. Um, oftentimes somebody who's been doing, doing what they do, plumbing, roofing, um, you know, home services for, for many years, but they're not sure how to, uh, how to really market their business or grow their presence online. Um, I, I always like to tell people if, if you're able to kind of focus on what it is that you do best, you know, and let us sort of help out with whatever it is that you do. I know you guys are in the same boat with, you can help with financial strategies. And there are other companies that work specifically with these types of businesses to help them manage their leads, to either get leads, coach their employees, or give them the tools that they need so that they can focus on what it is that they're best at. I know we've, uh, we've, we've spoken about that before. I think yeah. other other tools that they would really need, um, you know, obviously the digital marketing piece is, is something that obviously here at Signpost we're very invested in, um, making sure that people have their, you know, their websites are in, in a good spot. Um, we encourage our clients to focus on SEO, whether that's organic SEO and they're um, trying to make sure that all of their pages are showing up organically, um, up highly with, or, uh, highly in the search results, that is with um, plenty of traffic to their pages and, and uh, reviews that have come in recently, um, making sure that people are uh, engaging with past customers via, uh, you know, follow-up campaigns to see how they did, or even a newsletter, I think is important. So digital marketing, online presence is very important on Google as well. Um, can you think of any other uh, other tools that you maybe would recommend that somebody would invest in um, as, yeah, as a business I, owner? I have a, a, a good friend who um, is in the roofing business in Texas, mm-hmm. and which is a crazy market for, for right. I mean, I mean, seasonality, you've got weather and heat and rain and everything, hail, everything in between. Yep. It's a very challenging, kind of difficult mm-hmm. market for roofing. Um, sure. Because there just brings in so much kind of opportunity. I mean, when you're there after a big hailstorm, there's just kind of this r- land rush of, 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 of roofers to the area. And yeah. one thing he's done and really, really focused on, and I think this is probably kind of in the mm-hmm. social media world, but it, it also is kind of branding. It's just mm-hmm. telling his story that he lives in the neighborhood. Like he, yeah. is, he, he he's, is next door to you, taking his kids to soccer games. Mm-hmm. He's not going anywhere these are the the families on his his team is actually you know has father son t- uh kind of duos that work yeah. on their teams these are this is who we are mm-hmm. um we're not you know we're not fly by night uh and you can trust us and mm-hmm. and that's a that's kind of a free story to tell if that's mm-hmm. part of your story that you want to tell and for him it's very important to him because it's such an important you know, part of his business so yeah. It, it, it drips into social media, that, that mm-hmm. story that he's telling. Yeah. But um, I think it, it, it drips in anywhere you want it to, right? In your newsletter, in, mm-hmm. your, in your referrals and other places too, of just, mm-hmm. we are here to help you mm-hmm. as a member of the community. And that's, right. you know, that's who they are. And that's what they tell over and over again. Yeah. And I, I think that's, a, that's an important thing where your, your customers can tell that story as well. You know, I think, um, if, if we look at the things that are very important to invest in as a business owner, obviously making sure as, as number one um, with the coaching and mentoring aspect on the front end and making sure that your team um, is the best at what they do. And you can focus yeah. on, um, you know, coaching your employees to do things like ask for reviews um, or, or ask for referrals, you know, seeing if they have anybody in their, in their circle that they might want to pass them along to um, is, is very important to invest in. And then um, I think the the second piece after you've kind of coached your employees to do that and made sure that um, your uh, everything is all kosher on your end and um, investing in those tools to support your business uh, and, and making yeah. sure that you can fall back on those, you know, the tools that are going to help you book these jobs and follow up with these leads um, uh, appropriately. And then we also talked about the lead generation piece, you know, where yeah. um, on, on top of your employees referring, uh, you know, getting referrals from potential customers and using the tools they have in place to work with those customers. Lead generation can be important to work with people in your community uh, and, yeah, and, and I, make I sure like you have a pipeline. The operational piece as well. And, and, and um, kind of like I mentioned with the phone earlier, um, mm-hmm. 
you know, you can pile on, we can talk for five hours about marketing and generate the world's mm -hmm. best lead gen campaign. Um, but if you dump the bucket of leads into these often small businesses that don't have the resources, the technology, kind of the operational things in place to handle them, mm -hmm. then right. you got a leaky bucket. Problem. Yeah. And uh, we talked, we talked about that falling into that cycle, you know, it's uh, you're, you're losing out on potential income and you're going to set yourself up for needing to rely on those leads moving forward rather than nurturing them and, and making sure that you're, you're continuing yeah. to benefit from those connections moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. So um, spend all you want on digital marketing, but make sure, or kind of, but make sure the, 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 the back of the house, which is maybe things the customer doesn't see. And sometimes they do because they're, they're customer right. facing tools and invoicing and things like that. Mm -hmm. Make sure all that's in order too, because that kind of downstream impacts the customer experience, showing up on time to appointments, communicating mm -hmm. properly yeah. when you're running late, communicating properly when you're early, um, you know, kind of just sending the invoice quickly and efficiently with your branding. I know there's great mm -hmm. platforms for, for invoicing. Uh, right. All of those operational tools sometimes aren't uh, as flashy maybe as just Legion and marketing, but it really mm -hmm. kind of does come down to what the what is the customer's experience with you mm -hmm. from start to finish, getting on the phone, mm -hmm. setting the appointment, showing up on time, getting the invoice, getting the options for the kind of the different materials for the roofing, for, for your roof, um, mm -hmm. seeing those on, a, on an iPad, understanding those, making a choice, understanding your consumer financing on an iPad, all those tools, those really make kind of the customer experience. So drive as many as you can, mm -hmm. but then you want to think about it two ways or two kind of simple yeah. sections of the, the funnel, drive as many as possible, and then give them a great customer experience. And sometimes technology and tools are needed to do that. Totally. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And in my experience, paying attention to those, uh, you know, using the tools that, that are going to allow you to give a good customer experience is going to translate to your online presence. You know, yeah. uh, pe pe uh, businesses have never been um, as easily, you know, uh, I guess, researchable than they are uh, right now in, in the digital sector going along with, uh, you know, lead generation when, when leads are going on to, or when leads are about to work with a business, they're going to look at your online presence and they're going to see the past experience or experiences your customers have had with you on Google. So, um, definitely important to note, um, aside from even using these lead generation and, and tools and, and focusing on your online presence, investing in your own business uh, as well often gets overlooked. Investing in your employees, both technical and professional training. Um, where would you say, Mike, that, that technical and professional training would fit into business growth? Well, I, <clears throat> it's probably one of the, from the consumer side, uh, it's, it's it, along with kind of these operational things we talked about, it's mm -hmm. crazy how much that impacts me as the consumer, yet mm -hmm. it's not as often talked about in kind of the small business growth initiative world. So like it's very often marketing and there's very important, there's marketing gurus out there and, and SEO and things like that. And you guys do a great job of that. And then there's mm -hmm. you know, the operational kind of the technology pieces and field service management software. Mm -hmm. But then ultimately at the end of the day, it, what, what is, is the work being done quality work? Does right. it stick? And does the customer, you know, kind of, uh, when you leave their home or whatever, kind of wherever their, their place being, do they feel mm -hmm. like they were taken care of professionally and technically? So like right. that ultimately is, you know, you can cook the best food in the world in a restaurant, right. but if my waiter stinks mm -hmm. and is a jerk, it's going to have a bad uh, vibe on my, on my potential to come back or refer. So, um, it's almost always like, if you're not doing that constantly, any business investing in your people, both kind of technical training, professional training and, and mm -hmm. people development, then you're, it's going to catch up with you eventually. Right. So yep. take, take, take some time off, but you'll feel that eventually if you're not continuing to invest in that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's, that, that brings me to a, an interesting sort of, um, fifth thing that, that should be invested in because you could you could invest money in, in the things we've already talked about, you know, coaching and mentoring, tools that you have they're going to support your business, lead generation and, and tools to nurture those leads online. Uh, and then you can do all the technical and professional training that you'd like. But if the customer care piece isn't there as number five, then it really all of that money was sort of out the window. You know, if you're if your customers, your business's customers don't feel that they've been 
taken care of very well, then, then that's all going to come back to bite you in your online presence, which then cascades across all of other aspects of your business. So how would you say that, you know, uh, customer care really factors into that organic growth and taking care of your customers? Yeah, I, I, it's, 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 it's a little bit of kind of like perception is reality. So mm -hmm. I like that. Whatever, whatever the customer feels or thinks or is what happened. They would judge you or rate you on the back end of a service or during a service or be at the mm -hmm. beginning of a, whenever that is truth, <laughs> you know, kind of whether you like right. it or not. Um, so just, just keeping that in mind and realizing everything. I mean, just think of yourself as a consumer. I've got this washing machine uh, problem I have right now. It stinks to like even think about. Like it's leaking. It's in my garage. I, I just know it's going to be expensive. I think it is. I don't know. Causing them some anxiety. Just, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It just kind of, it kind of makes me squeamy just thinking oh, about it. And I do the same, honestly, thinking about like a gummy bear pizza, you know, it, exactly. it's uh, that, yeah. that, le that leaky yeah. washing machine is the equivalent of this consumer's gummy bear pizza. You yes. know, they don't want to, yes. they don't want to think about it. It makes you feel gross. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just laying in bed thinking about gummy bear pizzas and washing machines, but, right. but it's like that, that just, that's very common. We, we almost mm -hmm. need to like, remember that and think about that, that installing a new roof or fixing a washing machine or um, completely, you know, having to come in and overhaul something, you know, in, in my kitchen, it's like big, scary, expensive stuff that yeah. people uh, usually aren't often excited about, depending on what it is, you know, leaky mm -hmm. toilet is the most exciting thing in the world. So how I feel, you have a great chance to make me feel amazing coming out of right. this 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 opportunity or this uh, business transaction and mm -hmm. kind of get my fears down and and take care of me and there's there's a um there's kind of an, a, a social uh organizational idea called the, the peak end rule which is people's mm -hmm. experiences you know maybe on a vacation or maybe with a business are often completely defined by how i feel at the highest point and how i feel at the end so like, you might yeah. have a great vacation the world's best honeymoon but if you have a bad last day and your flight's delayed and canceled and you get in a fight with your brand new spouse and, and you just it ends sour, that's how people remember mm -hmm. that vacation on. And I think about that a lot yep. with kind of these, these, these business transactions that we're talking about mm -hmm. of how do I feel at the end? How do I feel? Mm -hmm. and, and are we investing and in reminding and training our people to just remember that the work is one thing, but just these are humans and, and, mm -hmm. and they, they are intimidated or scared by these situations and make them feel comfortable coming in and out. And I think it pays off in dividends long-term. You don't you just feel it right away. It's not some, oh, we just made a million dollars because of this, mm -hmm. but it's investing in your people that will help you in the yep. long-term. Yeah. And it, it really does. It, it ends up paying off in a lot of different ways. It makes your investments worthwhile and it helps you to be able to grow your business organically because these things will be coming in in the future. Referrals from people who you did make comfortable when you were working on whatever job that it that it yeah. was that they that they were initially anxious about. Um, if you've made the process easy for them using these things we've already talked about, you know, systems that you have in place that allowed them to book, you showed up on time, you were communicative, and they were able to see via your online presence that other people have had these experiences as well, can really make it a great experience across the board. Um, one thing that if I think go, that you... Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, sorry, if you go on that point, if you go on like Nextdoor or Yelp, anywhere where there's reviews, um, I know this because I was just looking on next door for uh, the washing machine. Mm -hmm. um, and it's almost all the review, the good reviews are almost always about kind of the soft skill things. Sure. Like I feel, yeah. Like I felt taken care of, or he takes care of his customers or mm -hmm. her, you know, kind of her, her contracting solution. Mm -hmm. is just, they're, they're on time and they, took care of us and yep. sometimes yeah. price comes in but it's usually fair price it's usually of course usually, it was a fair price for the services not the lowest price mm -hmm. and it's just interesting just go read reviews it the is reviews well always, always exactly and that's one of the things that we obviously deal with so much is the the reviews often uh, responsiveness and communicativeness is uh, is one of the things that people talk about a lot were they responsive were they were they open and upfront? Um, arriving on time, things like that. Yeah. Um, all very important, I think, to to circle all this back together. Um, it can sound daunting, I'm sure, even even just listening to us talk about all the things, the pieces that need to come together, um, and, and the ways that you need to invest in your business can be challenging to know what to focus on. And so, I wanted to ask you too, what 
how, how, what is the best way that business owners can sort of accomplish all these things, particularly on limited budgets? Maybe they're first starting out and they haven't really built up that pipeline yet. What are your thoughts? As someone who is often guilty of trying to eat an elephant uh, in one whole bite, as the biggest <laughs> bite possible, uh, or two elephants sometimes, mm -hmm. my recommendation is almost always start small and simple. Like start okay. with the most the simplest, easiest thing that you can implement or think about or build into your people and process that you could do by the end of the week. Like, mm -hmm. don't get over, because it is daunting. There's, mm -hmm. to, to even kind of think about trying to do it all at once will probably mean you'll do nothing. So right. what is the one thing that I can do by Monday afternoon? And maybe that's, ask for a referral from every single business or every single uh, customer that I did and then train my team to do that. You could do mm -hmm. that by Monday afternoon and it's not going to be mm -hmm. perfect. It's going to be weird. It's, it's going to be awkward. You're probably going to bumble it. Somebody's going to forget, but you can do that by Monday afternoon as this hypothetical date. And then you move on to yeah. the next, you know, and then, and then you move on to, okay, I've, I've done one, two, and three. Now it's time to talk to some partners about increasing my digital marketing spend. Because that feels a little bit daunting. Right. I'm not going to try and do it all at once. I'm going to do that now. And I've, I've only been doing that after I get down maybe some phone processes and the referral. Mm -hmm. So we've talked several times now about how daunting it can feel to do a lot of this at once. That's usually an indicator yeah. for me. Well, then don't. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably right. Fail. <laughs> right. Uh, don't. Right. Uh, start with one thing. Pick, pick mm -hmm. one thing and go do it and do it as good as you can and realize it might not be perfect. Right. Yeah. And I think that's a great thing to, to, to let people know and anybody who's, who's watching not to try and do too much at once, you know, making sure that you're um, spending your money and investing you, both your time and, and your, your resources um, in a way that is, that is sustainable and is not going to burn you out and let you focus on yeah. what's most important and building organically. Um, I know yeah, particularly with no fun mm -hmm. is trying to, I mean, that's <laughs> right. just... <laughs> Your, job's, your, your job is, you know, hard enough and you're doing incredible, yeah. incredible work, often physical and mental work mm -hmm. already. Um, yeah, don't, don't burn yourself out. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm sure that that's something you see with businesses on, on the front end. We've talked a lot about sort of um, investing in leads maybe on, on the front end when you're trying to build up your business. Um, I know that that's, that can seem like sort of a big undertaking, but um, I think oftentimes important, particularly for new people who are just getting started out um, with Funbox specifically, would you say that, is it worth it to do a short-term loan uh, to, to finance that outside support? And what kind of investment do you think that uh, these business owners uh, should put into uh, sort of investing in, in leads on the front end? Yeah. And I, I think to answer your the, the, the quick question that you asked mm -hmm. beginning is, it, is it worth it to take a loan? That's, mm -hmm. that's TBD. I, mm -hmm. uh, many businesses, you know, because of their cash flow and kind of, kind of how their business operates and their ability to collect on things. And they might not need short-term business credit. Um, and that's, that's fine. What we yeah. typically see is that many businesses do. And, and what that looks like is, um, I'm a roofer. I have several outstanding jobs. I haven't collected on those. My, my invoices are outstanding. I've got to buy materials for a new job. Payday's coming up. Um, I, I'm, I'm spending some money on marketing, which is the right thing to do, but it, it kind of cuts in between these outstanding invoices that I have for customers that are big jobs and going to get paid. They're just not ready yet. And all of a sudden you wake up and it's, it's, it's not that your business is kind of struggling or in peril, it's just you're in the middle of this weird cash flow situation. That's that's oftentimes the the type of customer or the type of business that we're mm -hmm. working with, and sure. that's when oftentimes a business line of credit uh, or maybe a term loan are are good options to give you a little bit of a backstop to help with the the investment and in, in the materials you need for a job or your marketing spend. That's you know once a month you have to pay that invoice, and you got to do it. It's important. A short term financing or short term line of credit might be great for that because you know you get paid in two weeks for this big job coming up so right. that's the type of situation we're often helping our businesses with sure gotcha yeah i think uh very you know important to remember uh that it you know 
it, it is important to think about when is the smartest time to uh, to make these big decisions and, and talk to somebody like Funbox who who is going to be able to kind of walk you through that decision and, and look at what you're looking to accomplish and, and make sure that um, you're able to do that in sort of a, a smart and sustainable way. Um, one interesting thing uh, on, on a previous episode of Contractors Corner when uh, it was, uh, we, they, we looked at how many leads it would, t- would take to reach you know, $5 million in revenue per year. And it, we found that it, it would take a roof, roofing business uh, in that particular model, a thousand leads to accomplish that goal. It might not okay. be something that would be, you know, smart to do for for all businesses, but I thought that was a an interesting thing looking at the exact number of leads that uh, it would take to hit a specific, you know, very, very large, uh, large yeah. number. Ideally, a business I think would be able to um, start with the leads and then move more into the organic, you know, nurturing those leads, growing that business. Yeah. And establishing yourself in that workspace. Um, yeah, you, a lot you, of our customers are, you know, because presumably many times you have to pay for those leads or you have to you know, at least right, pay exactly. for the efforts and the initiatives to, to generate those leads. So a lot mm-hmm. of our businesses that are in these very competitive markets that we're talking about, home services, you know, if I go mm-hmm. on Google and type in, you know, washing machine um, mm-hmm. repair in San Francisco, which is where I live. Yeah, you're going to mm-hmm. have a tough, a tough market. So um, very competitive. You, but mm-hmm. you do need to spend and, you know, kind of finding yourself saying, Hey, we're going to set a goal and commit to it. Um, to, to, to do these actions that we talked about where they're kind of training and, and mm-hmm. rural gathering or just a number of leads that we need to set. And you know, how are we going to generate those and create a plan to do that? And then sometimes that just requires some short-term financing. And that's often where mm-hmm. you've been. So a lot of our customers tell us, Hey, we need it for marketing right now for marketing services, because, we're, we're ready to go. We're ready to invest. We know this investment will be worth it. We're, it's time to do it. The ROI will be positive. We just need some short-term financing to do that. Great. Mm-hmm. That's where we come in to help them on that thousand lead. Yeah, thousand lead exactly. Goal, which is what they should be setting themselves. <laughs> right. Up. Think big. Why not? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think uh, with, with Funbox and, and helping people sort of um, contractors specifically that are, that are growth minded, making sure that, um, you know, you're, you're making a smart plan with, uh, uh, with those people. I think are, are anything else that you guys would do with with these contractors who are looking to grow, you know, as um, sometimes aggressively or, or at least sustainably, um, anything else that you, you can think of that you do to help those those contractors are sort of talking through that decision? Yeah, I, I think w- we would, you know, you could check out our website or and mm-hmm. learn about kind of the, the types of instances when businesses just like you are mm-hmm. using their lines of credit. Because oftentimes that's a question that we get is, um, or just just kind of a problem is I, I just cash flow is tight now what so think about what other businesses similar to you how they're using cash uh, a business line of credit almost more as an operational tool almost more as mm-hmm. like a, a, a just kind of a back pocket tool to use to help them when cash flow is tight when they want to invest in marketing so I would say mm-hmm. yeah think about it like that and think about mm-hmm. investing in in potentially using a business line of credit to invest mm-hmm. in the things that are going to help your business grow. Um, sure. Because especially when you're confident and the, and the ROI and the payoff. Yeah. And that's some, some really interesting, you know, it's a fascinating. I know both of us are working with, um, you know, businesses like this sort of in different sectors, but fascinating to sort of tie everything together and see how everything really complements each other. I know throughout the day, you've made some excellent points. You know, we've, we've talked about, um, you know, first coaching and mentoring is the first thing, you know, we, we talked about investing in tools to support your operational goals, um, lead generation, both, you know, services to provide leads and the tools that are going to help you nurture those leads, uh, investing in your team with training and, and technical, uh, both technical and professional, making sure that everything is tied together to give your customer a good experience. And then uh, relating to that customer experience, customer care, and making sure that yeah. uh, your, your employees and you are focusing on giving your, cons- or your consumers the great care that, that they deserve and that you are able to provide to tie everything together and really uh, be able to grow your business sustainably. I think making sure you have the right tools in place, whether that's a business line of credit or um, making sure that you've got these systems to, to nurture and, and complete these jobs um, are, are really are the main keys to long-term growth, which is what we're trying to help people with um, both from, from different sides um, for, yeah. uh, for the viewers, really, if, if you do want to learn more about Funbox and, and uh, 
uh, getting help and investing in tools for the long-term growth that you're looking for. Um, I know you, you're definitely able to connect with, you know, either Mike or the Funbox team. Um, Mike, how, how do you think, uh, what's the best way for people to, uh, to connect with your team? Yeah, I, I would say um, you can always check out our website, funbox.com. We also mm -hmm. have a, in, in partnership with, with, with you guys, uh, mm -hmm. funbox.com forward slash signpost. To, mm -hmm. to kind of see how we're working together and you can start your application there for, for credit as well. It's, it's free to apply. Um, there is you know, no kind of no obligation, um, flexible terms, mm -hmm. flexible kind of usage uh, terms for, for using your line of credit. So yeah, check us out at funbox.com or funbox.com forward slash signpost. Also our blog has a lot of great content. I think I know yours does as well. Mm -hmm. I'm very focused on small business operations and learnings and, and tools and things to think about. And, and when you do that, you know, after this conversation as well, think about, talk a lot about a lot, a lot about a lot of things. How can I do one? Yeah. How can I do one thing? Right. What, what can this blog teach me? Great. Now I can do go do one of them is, is a, is a good way to think about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. And we're, you know, I know both businesses here to help uh, our clients. We here at Signpost, you can talk to our team. Um, we can help you put together a process to get a healthy lead pipeline going so that you can get that lead, get the job, get the review and work through some of these, uh, these five things that we talked about today. Um, I'll leave you there, Mike. Uh, I, I really appreciate the conversation. It's been great talking to you. Um, we, we appreciate you uh, joining us. Yeah, thanks, TJ. I really appreciate this. This was fun. Yeah, of course. Appreciate it, Mike. And make sure that for those of you who are interested in getting more of this content moving forward, hit that subscribe button in our YouTube channel. You'll be notified the next time we have a Contractor's Corner video release. But until then, we will talk to you very soon.